All right, we're going live. A little pregame, pregame banter. I want to make sure everybody gets logged in okay. It's John Nemo. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me get a couple of quick things here going and make sure everybody can see and hear me okay. As you're getting logged in, if you can let me know in the chat where you're logging in from and what type of work you do and if you can see and hear me okay. So let me throw a couple things in here. Welcome, 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 everybody. All right, I see people popping in. Right, I'm going to start reading names because that's my favorite. Andoni is here. How are you? We talked on the phone, didn't we? Marianne is here. Suzanne. Marvis. Marvis and I just connected on LinkedIn. Marvis is ready to take off. Marvis is ready to start building some business online. Terry is here. Jim, Jerry, Will, Betsy. Kirk is here. L period is here. L, you're a mystery, L period. I want to know who you are. Tell me in the chat. <laughs> Ryan and Gary, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me know uh, in the chat if you can see and hear me okay. Also, okay, Andoni says, greetings from Spain. I hope you're safe and sound, my friend. Gary in Montana. Ooh, audiobooks voiceover. Gary, uh, I might need to put you on just so we can hear you say something like, in a world. <laughs> <laughs> That's serious. Oh, Suzanne's got no audio or video. Oh, no. Um, try and refresh and check computer or device settings. Hopefully that's working. Everybody else hear me okay? Hey, Will, how are you? Where are you from, Will? What do you do? Thanks for coming out. Uh, Peggy from Plano, Texas. Jeremy from St. Louis. Uh, tell me what you guys do. Marvis from, uh, yeah, Marvis, we talked on LinkedIn. Okay. Divorce and life coach. Wonderful. All right. So as you're getting logged in, Ryan says everything's good where he is. Wonderful. Let me know where you're from, what type of work you do. Uh, I want to try to personalize this as much as I can when we dive into the training. Uh, let me make sure we've got everything going here as we get the, kind of the pregame finished. All right, coach and some LinkedIn training, Peggy. Very nice. Jody says, say my name. <laughs> Jody, how are you, Jody? Good to see you. Uh, Jane from Madrid, Spain. The Spaniards are coming in strong on this webinar. I love it. All right, Will said we connected on LinkedIn. Insurance sales from Louisiana. Are you a raging Cajun, Will? Is it LSU? Is it the raging Cajuns? What school is that? Is it uh, Louisiana Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns? You got LSU. You got Lafayette. I'm trying to go into college football SEC talk with Will here. Sorry. Jane is here without coronavirus. That is wonderful to hear. John from Stillwater, Minnesota. John, we're, we're social distancing quite well because I'm in Woodbury, Minnesota. So we're not far apart. <laughs> what type of work do you do, John? Um, Teddy in San Diego, small business owner. Um Good to see you. What type of business, Teddy? Uh, Will says ULM. Oh, Louisiana Monroe. Got you. See, I got I got college football cred, Will. Catherine, Kathleen from Nashville. Good, good, good. Woodbury, New Jersey. Ryan, you're in the wrong Woodbury, man. All the cool kids live in Woodbury, Woodbury Minnesota. All right. Yeah, Suzanne is killing it. Mobile notaries. Suzanne is killing it. And maybe what I'll do, Suzanne, uh, Suzanne is, I met her at Social Media Marketing World. Suzanne Feinberg, everyone. Candace, Candace is also killing it. All my LinkedIn Riches homies are coming in. Lee from St. Paul, Minnesota. Dude, right down the street. Okay, so Suzanne and Candace are both in my LinkedIn Riches program and have had a ton of quick wins and success. And maybe what we'll do um, when I'm going through some of the LinkedIn tips, I'll show their examples because they both have really, really smart, hyper-niched businesses and they're getting a bunch of business off of LinkedIn. So, all right, across the highway, marketing, product development. Curry, how are you? Thinking of you, Curry, because Curry has a long background in travel kind of um, healthcare. So like flying to other countries, man, it's gotta be crazy, you know, that world right now. Paul from Grand Junction, Colorado. Greetings from Megan, one and all. Good to see you, Megan. How are you? All right, I'm just looking through some of the other names here. Okay, good, good, good. We got a lot of people coming in. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Dude, this is just, okay, Curry says good, shelter at home and suspend the business. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. And so we'll have some Q&A time today to talk about your businesses. Hey, Tom from Columbus, Ohio. 
Good to see you, my friend. Glad you're here. Um, we'll do a lot of Q&A as well. Um, and Paul has good questions, how to get people to engage and share posts. Ben is baking bread. Well, share some, Ben. Come on, man. I love it. Um, here's what I want to do. So I've got some training prepared. Uh, and again, my name's John Nemo. If you don't know me or, or landed here, Gustin, how are you, man? I know Gustin. Good to see you. All right. Good, good, good. Okay. I know these are a lot of familiar faces. Okay. So Marianne made it. Marianne Foscarini. It's yes, a Marianne Foscarini. She's a very Italian. I don't know if you're Italian, Marianne, but it's fun to say that, Marianne. So good to see you. Marianne's another rock star. Okay, okay, okay. Let me get into the presentation. Uh, and what I want to do is give you some training today. And let me pull this up. Yep, we're going to pull up the slides. I'm going to turn off my camera so that my handsomeness doesn't distract everyone <laughs> while we're going. And I want to walk through today's training. This is all new. I just put this together. And what I'm going to do as we get going is walk through this training. Uh, what I've really discovered, three kind of key secrets to taking your business online and really also knowing how to sell online without being sleazy. So let me do that. I'm just going to debate if I want to. Let me do this. Okay. Everyone can see. Can everyone see the first slide? Okay. Captain Kirk in Philly is here. Good to see you, Bruce Kirk. I see you. Just type yes in the comments if you can see um, uh, the, the slides okay. Apparently, Paul can see the popcorn bucket. I'm hoping for a replay, Paul. Um, and yes, popcorn bucket helmets are the new look. Um, <laughs> just laughing at all the comments. All right, focus power, Daniel Sun. Here we go. So I want to dive in again. Welcome you to, under, to three simple secrets to taking your business online and selling without being sleazy. Again, my name is John Nemo. Uh, one of the reasons I am very qualified to deliver today's training is I have worked from home since 2012. I've been practicing social distancing for almost a decade. And you can see, here's a look at the office, Rosie the dog jumping my chair before webinars. I have three wild young boys. So I know what it's like to be working from home. In fact, my wife just gave the kids a talking to us. She's like, dad has a very important call. <laughs> Like, but another great thing about me that's, I think, important to know is I was once featured on a cookie. I was able to get so much success for one of my LinkedIn richest students, um, Brennan Lucas at Whipped Bake Shop. I believe they're in Philly, Philadelphia. Uh, they made me a cookie and shipped it to me. Spoiler alert, I tasted amazing. I, I tell you what, I kid you not. If you have to have a cookie, Put me on it. It tastes great. So shout out to Brennan Lucas and the crew there at Whip Bake Shop. Uh, so I also do have legitimate credentials. If you don't know me, you never heard of me, you're wondering, is this just going to be a stand-up comedy? No, I am a LinkedIn trainer, a best-selling author. I'm best known for my LinkedIn riches training. I've rewritten LinkedIn profiles personally for people like Chris Brogan, Amari Smith, Bob Berg, John Lee Dumas. John Jans from Duct Tape Marketing, Ray Edwards, lots and lots of big name people have had me directly write their LinkedIn profiles. I've got the Nemo Radio Marketing Podcast, seven different books. You can see at the bottom kind of the media credits and accolades and all that. So I do have legitimate qualifications here to show you how to really win business online. And I want to just start very quickly with, in 60 seconds, why I did this. Why in 2012, this was a picture. I used to come home every day from a corporate job. I had a very safe six-figure job. I was never going to get fired. I worked for a labor union, so it's impossible to get fired when you work for a labor union. Uh, but I really had this entrepreneurial itch I wanted to scratch. And I also really wanted to be home. Like you can see how young my boys were here. I was missing the best part of their lives. And so I really wanted to figure out, can I make this leap? Can I start a business and work from home? And this is back in 2012, and really build a business around my lifestyle instead of the other way around. And so I quit my day job. I, I literally, I started my business on the side, my marketing agency. I had one client, I had enough money for 30 days, and I had th these three at home, plus my wife who was home taking care of them. And the reason I share that is it was on me. Like I'm, I didn't come with investors. I didn't come with venture capital. I didn't have a big nest egg. And I don't necessarily recommend doing this. <laughs> like, But this is a time and an era we're living in right now with all this coronavirus craziness. This is a time to think about it. 
and think about is, you know, now that you're home, now that you have some time to reflect, do you want to make a leap? Do you want to do something different? And what I'm going to share with you today and what I hope you're encouraged with is you can build an incredibly effective business online, or if you work inside a company, you can really do well online with sales and marketing from home, from anywhere. You don't have to meet with everyone face to face. Because what I was able to do, and this is all the way back in 2012, within the first 90 days, being home on my own, again, having to make it work all online, I couldn't travel, I didn't have a budget, I didn't have anyone to meet with, no one knew who I was, I was able to do six figures in revenue, all online, all without meeting anyone face to face to seal the deal. And I share this with you because look, if I can do this, there's no reason any of you watching cannot do this. And here's what I mean. We live in the greatest era in human history ever to do business online, to monetize your knowledge, to sell a product or service to a stranger all the way around the world. Because of all the tools that we have, you can do it. Now there's specific systems and strategies and scripts and approaches I wanna teach you, but I want you to walk into this training understanding it is very doable and very possible. Even a guy who publishes images of himself with a popcorn bucket on his head can be successful. So there are no excuses. We're removing all the excuses, okay? So I wanna dive into the biggest secrets to taking your business online and selling without having to be sleazy, all right? Secret number one, that, and this is a great image of one of our boys, Bailey, just looking shocked. So a lot of real, real life images. I'm trying to limit the stock photography today. The first secret to really being successful online is you've got to educate and you've got to entertain. And so let me really dive into this. It's understanding that whoever educates the most wins. There's such a great quote from Chet Holmes, The Ultimate Sales Machine. It's a phenomenal book. And he says, you will attract way more buyers if you offer to teach them something of value than simply just trying to sell to them. And, and this is something I really learned early on is that prospects do not want to be sold to. Prospects do, however, want to learn or discover new things. I call this a cold, hard truth. This is an image of me jumping in one summer. We went on a little camping trip and we jumped into these waterfalls. And this is me emerging from the pool and it was ice cold. And it was just a slap across the face, a total shock. But a lot of people see this and it is, it's, it's a kind of a cold, harsh reality is, Nobody wants you sell it to be sold to. Nobody wants to buy your stuff. They do want to learn. They do want to discover new approaches, right? They're here to wanting to learn and discover. And that's why you've got to teach and educate to be successful. So I think about this, and this was instilled to me at an early age. This is an image from the late 1970s when I grew up in Illinois. Both of my parents here were teachers. They both taught at university. They taught English. And they, you know, educated. But what was really interesting was they were limited, of course, in the 1970s in, in a university system. Their classroom of people they could reach was 20 or 30 students at a time. They, that was it. That was their limitation for being able to teach. You and I, our classroom is literally the whole world, right? Like all of these different social networks where your, you know, ideal audience is hanging out, whatever they might be. I love that Google Plus is in here. Bring back Google Plus, man. I loved Google Plus. <laughs> but our classroom is global. There is, like I said earlier, we live in the best era ever to you know, reach anyone anywhere in the world and do business together. There are no limitations. The gatekeepers are gone. The technology has made it a level playing field. You, however, have to really understand now what goes into teaching and being successful and getting people interested in what you have to sell. So what we want to do, the real simple premise behind this is I want you to go to the platforms where your prospects are already hanging out and give them cookies, give them something tasty, give them something enjoyable. So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, my prospects are hanging out on LinkedIn because I do B2B sales. So I'm going to LinkedIn every day and I'm giving people cookies, right? And here's what I mean by this. When you think about how people uh, trust and like and buy. Everyone online today is claiming authority, right? Everyone's a ninja, hi -ya, hoo -hee, ha! right? Like everyone's claiming authority. I'm a LinkedIn ninja. 
I'm a sales guru, right? If I have another Jedi Knight approach me about SEO, I'm going to puke, okay? Like enough. Like every, anyone can hide online and claim that they'll save you millions of dollars and claim that they're the greatest person ever. It's much different when someone demonstrates actual expertise. And this is what I'm getting at. Not claiming I can help you make six figures on LinkedIn, but demonstrating to you the actual techniques and you know strategies and scripts that will help you get that. Because the big thing I've learned selling online for the last decade is you have to earn the right to ask. You cannot just simply try to you know connect with someone on a social network and ask them to marry you on the first date. It just doesn't work that way. You know, <laughs> like you have to practice professional courtship, warm them up, but you also have to demonstrate some expertise and show them how you can help them. So let me tell you what I mean. Again, I just love this slide because so many people, I want to hammer this point into the ground with a sledge, you know, hammer and just make it clear, like, don't claim. I, is anyone else sick of the Facebook ads with the gurus in front of sports cars or laying on the beach, push a button and make money? Now, what's really funny about this image was I actually was making money while I was laying here on the beach this day. I had an automated system and I'm going to show you how all this works later, but I was making money laying on the beach because of content and automation and the things I'm going to teach you today. It really was true. But if I just started with a Facebook ad here, you know, and just claimed I could do it, you're not going to believe me or trust me. You've been burned before. So you have to demonstrate the expertise and how it will work. And the, this brings the question up. People say, okay, fine, but I'm not a university professor. I, I don't know where to start. What do I quote unquote teach people? Or you say give out cookies, you know, to demonstrate value. What does that look like? What kind of cookies should I be sharing? What kind of teaching do I want to put online? This is making me hungry. Look at myself on a cookie. <laughs> Here, let me uh, take a drink and read this quote. I literally built my entire business back in 2012 off this one sentence from Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. Here's what he said. He said, your ideal customer does not care about you. He or she only cares about himself, morning, noon, and after supper. This is the cold, hard reality of selling online, bringing your business online, engaging people online. They don't care about you. They just don't, right? We care about ourselves morning, noon, and after supper. So when you're going into teaching, when you're going into demonstrating, when you're bringing cookies to people online, it's not about you. It's about helping them get what they want. And the most effective way to do this, the fast and easy way to do this is giving people simple, quick, and very visible wins. Here's a visible win that our son Bailey got a few years ago. He just ate a whole thing of cotton candy. So notice like under his teeth there, like the blue, you know, sticky stuff all over his face. He like, he just housed an entire thing of cotton candy. That was a quick win, right? Very visible, simple, and quick. This is what you want to do with demonstrating your expertise online. You want to bring cotton candy and cookies, quick, visible wins. So here's an example of how I do this when I'm working with people around LinkedIn. So one of the things I'm best known for is helping people find and engage and sell to their ideal clients using LinkedIn. So when I'm going out, I don't come with my handout going, hey, buy my course, buy my book, give me money, I'll show you how to make money on LinkedIn. Instead, I start with demonstrating some expertise and doing it in a way that you can immediately implement and see and get quick wins from and momentum. So here's one example that I teach in LinkedIn Riches and that I use in presentations about LinkedIn. And this is a real-time example of a quick win that you can use right now. So like we're going very meta on the presentation, but so many LinkedIn profiles are about you, right? They're written like a resume, they're written in the third person. It's all about your job and your company. And to go back to that quote I just shared from Dale Carnegie, nobody cares, right? Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares that you're the CEO of your small business. Nobody cares about the awards and accolades that you've won. People only care about themselves, including on LinkedIn. So here's what we do. Here's a quick win example of how to do this. You create what I call a client-facing LinkedIn profile. And by the way, the only time you should invoke Jedi Knights or experts or gurus or ninjas is when you're talking about Star Wars and Yo if Yoda was doing your profile. Okay, I'll accept that. <laughs> right, Yoda and Luke, they could really help you with LinkedIn. 
So here's what I mean with a client facing profile. Here's an instant quick win. You can do this right now. You can jot this down. You can have your LinkedIn profile pulled up while we're doing this. So your LinkedIn headline, which is the little area right under your name and your photo, instead of your LinkedIn headline reading like a job title, CEO, Nemo Media Group, or marketing director, blah, 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 blah. Talk instead about two things on your LinkedIn headline, the service you provide and the target or niche audience that you serve. So let me show you this quick win in action. Instead of a job title, here's what my LinkedIn headline looks like. John Nemo, and then here's the service I provide underlined in red, LinkedIn lead generation, that's the service I provide. And then I say four, and here's my target audiences I wanna serve, business coaches, consultants, and small business owners. And then I explain, you know, I have online courses and consulting. So what this does, the quick win element on LinkedIn is when a business coach or consultant or small business owner sees me on LinkedIn, if they get an invite from me, if they come across my profile and they see my you know, picture and name, they immediately know what's in it for them if they decide to connect with John. What can John Nemo do for me? He can help me get leads on LinkedIn, especially if I am a coach, a consultant, or small business owner. So instead of it saying John Nemo, CEO, Nemo Media Group, Ninja Guru, whatever, it's just, here's who I am, Here's the service I provide and here's who I help. See how fast and simple and easy that is? That's a quick win that anyone can do and immediately have visible improvement on their profile. I give another example. Here's a student of mine, Paramita, who I'll talk more about later in another quick win example, but her LinkedIn headline, right? She does accounting and bookkeeping. So I said, let's niche you. I rewrote her profile. I said, let's niche you for construction companies because she had a few clients in the construction and home building industries that she had a ton of success with. So I said, one of my tips around LinkedIn, of course, is don't try to be everything to everyone or you'll be nothing to no one. So I said, let's niche you. Here's your service, construction, accounting, and bookkeeping, virtual CFO and controller, but it's for a target audience, for construction businesses and home builders. So she's hyper niche focused. Here's an audience I help. Now connect the dots with LinkedIn. When Paramita goes out to connect with people on LinkedIn, guess who she's trying to connect with? Home builders and construction businesses. And when they see her profile, it's all about them and a service she provides. So this is an example of a quick win. It's a cookie, it's cotton candy, it's very simple. Anyone can do this. Hopefully some of you watching it right now are doing it. One more example, Pete is the CEO of an insurance franchising company in Florida. And so what we did is we changed his headline down here where it's highlighted and it says, here's the service he provides insurance agency franchising and training. So hyper niche specific service for a specific target audience, licensed Florida insurance agents who want to grow a successful agency. So there's even a little benefit in there, but Pete is very specific, right? He hacked his LinkedIn profile. So his first name box has Pete, his full name, Pete Pogge. And then the second part he put in his job title, you don't have to do that, it's just a little hack. But the more important thing is the headline. When they see this, if I'm a Florida insurance agent and I wanna grow my agency or leave the agency I'm at and start my own gig, Pete is someone that can help me and here's how. So these are quick win examples. That's the key idea here is, Cookies, cotton candy, teach me something quick and easy to start with. We don't have to get into heavy lifting right away when you want to demonstrate expertise. Here's one more example on LinkedIn. And this is just a, another great quick win that anyone can do. And you can do it right now while you're watching this training is first sentence of your LinkedIn profile. So you have your name, your headline, which I just showed you first sentence of the about section. Instead of it's, you know, talking about you and yourself and whatever, it's, what I do, I help, insert the name of your target audience, achieve a goal or desire they want by providing my product or service. So what I do, I help this target audience achieve their goal by providing this product or service. That's a quick win, that's super easy, that's super simple, and people will now implement that and feel good and get excited. It's like having a cookie. You have one cookie, what do you want? You want another one right? You have one bite of cotton candy. What do you want? Another bite. So you're bringing these bite-sized, tasty, valuable, kind of teachable 
items to someone and they're saying, great, that was cool. I got my LinkedIn headline updated. I got the first sentence updated. It's visible. It's a quick win. I'm getting excited. I see the strategy here. Uh, what's next? What's next? What's next? Now you're moving them through to more and more of your content because again, you're demonstrating some expertise. I'm not just telling you to create a client facing profile on LinkedIn and why that matters. I'm showing you how to do it. I'm literally giving you fill in the blank templates that are quick wins. Here's examples of a few of these sentences I want to share. So back when I left um, and had that one client and enough money for 30 days and I had to make it happen, my one client was a debt collector. So what I did on LinkedIn to win business online was I rebranded my profile as John Nemo Debt Collection Marketing Services. I became Debt Collection Marketing Guy. I wasn't trying to appeal to anyone else online at that time, just that one niche audience because I had one client. He was a debt collector. I knew the industry because I had worked for a trade association there. So I knew I'm going to take this one client, knock it out of the park for him. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to try to get more debt collectors to work with me. So the first sentence of my LinkedIn profile was all about them. What we do or what I do in that case, I help this audience, debt collection agencies, get these benefits that they want. Increase revenue, win new clients, enhance and protect their brand by providing this service, industry-specific PR and marketing. See how targeted that is? That's another quick win example where you can see the strategy. If it's a debt collector that I invite to connect on LinkedIn, the first sense of my profile is all about how I help them get what they want. It's not my resume. It's not John Nemo's, the CEO of this media group and works with anyone and everyone. It's John Nemo hosts people just like me. Here's an example. I love this one from Paramita where she, again, I rewrote her profile and within 24 hours, she got a new client. Like, uh, and actually I think it was a $25,000 client. It was a retainer client. So, and, and I, I love putting this up there as quick wins of how this actually impacts your business and wins business online. So her sentence was what I do, I help this audience commercial, residential construction businesses, and home builders. That's her target audience. I help them get this benefit they want, increase profits, streamline financial processes, improve cash flow, and then by providing this service, industry-specific accounting, bookkeeping, virtual CFO, and controller services. So we did that. Paramedia and I rewrote her profile. She published it online. She got one new lead the next morning who viewed her profile, sent her a message, and she sent me a screenshot and said, hey, are you taking on new clients? I'm a, guess what? I'm a construction agency owner. I need a bookkeeper. Can we talk? Boom, closed them, retainer, $25,000 contract. Like that's how powerful this is when you go for simplicity with your marketing and also quick wins. This doesn't feel monumental to you, right? You can change one sentence on your profile. So when you're looking to win new business online with your prospects, don't overwhelm them. Give them simple, quick steps quick wins they can take that also demonstrate your expertise. Okay, let me take a drink here. How are we doing so far? Tell me what you're drinking as well. Let's see, I wanna just check the comments. Nice cookie. <laughs> All right, tell me right now, pause. Everyone in the comments, no line. What are you drinking right now? Wine, beer, I'm drinking uh, Mio Energy Orange mixed into water because it's noon here. Uh, and I am hyper caffeinated as always. I'm waiting. All right. John is pounding coffee. Love it. Mary Ann's drinking water. Very responsible. Curry's got water. Gary's got a nice lager. Gary, I'm calling you out, baby. Gary marked it private, but I'm reading it. All right. Gustin's pounding some Dr. Pepper. L is drinking tea. Uh, Caramel is tea. GM water. Chris is pounding Diet Coke, which I respect. Ice vanilla latte. Orange juice, Peggy. Arnold Palmer, hot tea, wishing it was a mimosa. Yes, Megan, switch gears already. It's noon. It's it's noon somewhere. What's the phrase? Five o'clock somewhere. Water, uh, sales brew. Ooh, that sounds good. Uh, coffee and Bailey's. Ryan is winning. Ryan just won the drink contest. Coffee and Bailey's. My wife will love that. Then beer thirty will come. Booyah! Less is on Diet Coke. And by the way, important public service announcement. Diet Pepsi is trash. Can we just agree on that? Diet Coke forever will be king of that mountaintop. All right, so let's carry on. <laughs> so to make sure you're all still live in the comments. Another quick win example with LinkedIn. And again, this is just 
getting to this point of how teaching can really impact people, I show people how to use mini headlines, what I do, how I do it, why it works, what others say. So I'm giving you quick wins that demonstrate expertise, that provide visible proof to you and get you excited to want more. If, if you, this was a LinkedIn training webinar, wouldn't you want more from me? Wouldn't you be getting excited? Wouldn't you be thinking, this is really cool. Now I got my profile cranking. What's next? What's next? What's next? Then I start showing you how to sell and give you scripts and pretty soon you're gonna want more and then we can do a course and see how this works. It's so exciting. All right, so the second part of secret number one, we talked about educating. We really hammered that home with the quick wins and the cookies and demonstrating expertise. Now we gotta talk about one of my favorite things is, it's not just enough to educate people, you also have to entertain. You must practice a principle I call infotainment because there is nothing more boring in marketing. I'm sorry, there is no bigger sin in marketing than being boring. And I want another pause here. Where are my dog people at? You can see a photo of Rosie the dog here looking bored. Uh, I wanna know the name of your dog and the breed right now. Put it in the comments. Hey, if you're a cat person, uh, I don't care. So, <laughs> sorry cat people, I want dogs. Tell me your dog's name and breed. Um, you know, that's what really matters. Uh, let's let's do a little dog talk here. Rosie is a Wheaton Terrier. She is psycho, full of energy, looking very bored here because there's nothing to chase and no one to run with. All right, so now my dog people are coming in. Suzanne's got Alfie, a little poodle. Always oh, sounds fun. Um, and Shay, I can come back to many headlines to answer that question for you. All right. Uh, Kyra Jane, that is that your dog? What kind of dog is Kyra? Curry's got Allie, a foundling. Mia, a kitty. Suzanne, I told you, no cats allowed. Milo, a 12-year-old Labradoodle. All oh, those are nice dogs. I bet Milo is very nice. Um, Sam is a black lab. Awesome. Les has got the Siberian Husky. Those dogs are sick. They just look terrifying, the Siberian Huskies, but I'm sure they're really nice. All right, Peggy's got a Persian cat. Cat people. The cat people are breaking in. I love it. Oh, Teddy's got a pit bull. Ruger. <laughs> But aren't pit bulls really nice, Teddy? I've heard that they're they get a bad rap, obviously. Um, Marianne, her daughter's dog, a Chihuahua Jack Russell mix, nice. Jean Poodle, Marvin Humphrey, a Russian tortoise. Wow, I love it. Pugsley, a pug. Well, that's a classic name. Our son Bailey, who's been in a lot of these photos, he's wanted a pug forever. David, I'm just holding off. I told me you can have Rosie. That's one dog's enough. Um, Labrador chocolate. Oh, lab. Great day. All right. My dog people are here. Pit bulls are fun. Yeah, they're, they're good dogs. Okay. So Rosie is pointing out something very important. You must practice what I call infotainment. You've got to give people information online, but you have to do it in an entertaining fashion. There is no bigger sin than being boring. Cause if you're boring, no one remembers you and no one pays attention. So let me give you examples. When I do trainings on LinkedIn, Here's an example. I talk about, hey, it's really important to personalize your messaging on LinkedIn. It's really important to break the ice by looking at someone's profile and you know getting them engaged at a one-on-one -on -one level. Now that's just information, but then I bring a story behind that. So one of the stories I tell on why you need to personalize messaging on LinkedIn is called Send It In Jerome. And it's a story about how when I was out prospecting on LinkedIn, I found a debt collector who I wanted to sell marketing services to. The only thing I could glean from his LinkedIn profile was he went to the University of Pittsburgh in the 1980s. And so I immediately going to my college sports fandom was like, what do I know about Pitt during the 80s? Oh yeah, send it in Jerome. And this was this famous basketball play. So during a college basketball game in 1987, I think it was, Jerome Lane, who played for Pittsburgh, went up and dunked the basketball and it shattered the glass backboard. You can see it in the image. The rim came off, the glass backboard came down and the famous announcer, Bill Rafferty yelled out, send it in Jerome, send it in, right? It was this great story. So within like 14 seconds, I looked at this person's profile, saw they went to Pitt in the 1980s. And when I invited them and messaged them on LinkedIn, I said, hey, you know, wanted to connect. My name's John Nemo. By the way, do you remember send it in Jerome? And this person not only connects with me, he writes back within about 60 seconds and he says, I was at the game, right? He's talking about, I was there and I remember him dunking and the crowd went crazy. Because remember, he was a student at Pitt when this happened. So that's 
a story that I tell to help drive home a concept. I deliver the information of, you have to personalize your engagement on LinkedIn, but I do it with a story that you'll remember. Now you'll remember send it in Jerome and like, oh yeah, the one where the guy dunks the basketball and that was how he got this debt collector to engage. And the postscript to this send it in Jerome story is the debt collector and I started talking on LinkedIn messages uh, he's like, you know what? Your timing's perfect. I looked at your profile. It's all about how you help debt collectors. We actually need marketing help. Can we have a call tomorrow? And I closed a $10,000 deal with the guy the next day. So, I mean, this is the power of personalizing your messaging on LinkedIn, but it's not nearly as effective unless I have a great story to illustrate it and to entertain you because stories really entertain. You know, sharing information will inform people but stories will entertain them and keep them paying attention. Another example, oh my gosh. Uh, I wanna hear, how many of you can sing this entire song, Ice Ice Baby, to this day? Type yes in the comments if you can recite Ice Ice Baby word for word. I'm waiting. Because I wanna tell you something, take heed. I'm a lyrical poet. Miami is on the scene just in case you didn't know it, right? Like I can pretty much do all of Ice Ice Baby. Now, I use this when I'm doing a presentation on LinkedIn as infotainment. I'm bringing in a funny pop culture, one hit wonder, early 1990s star, Vanilla Ice, and the song Ice Ice Baby. And I'm talking about having a client facing LinkedIn profile that solves problems for your ideal clients. And of course, the hook of the song Ice Ice Baby was, if you got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Now check out the hook when my DJ revolves it, right? So like I'll do Ice Ice Baby and I'll actually play it sometimes, but it illustrates a point. Make your LinkedIn profile about the problems you solve for your clients, which as this lyrical poet explained is a key thing, right? So let me see my Ice Ice Baby, <laughs> right? Yo, VIP, let's kick it. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. All right, stop, collaborate, and listen. Nemo's back with a brand new edition, something. Grab some, I'll, I'll stop now. But I can do the whole song if you want. So, okay. So again, infotainment. The information is, and the strategy is, talking your LinkedIn profile about problems you solve for a client. The entertaining way to deliver it is Ice Ice Baby. So this is what you need to do, is tell great stories. So for example, if you're putting together a case study or a strategy, here's a simple three sentence formula to create great stories. What it was like, what happened, and what it's like now. Very, very simple. Especially use this for case studies when you want to demonstrate how you helped a client achieve something or demonstrate how you were able to achieve something. What it was like, I was 100 pounds overweight. What happened? I changed my diet and exercise. What it's like now, I have this transformation. I've lost 100 pounds, et cetera, et cetera. Like that's a weight loss case study. It could be a business one. What it was like, I was struggling to find new leads. I was living off referrals and I was, you know, getting very worried and business was drying up. What happened? I tapped into the power of LinkedIn and discovered how to generate all the leads I'd ever need. What it's like now, I have more leads than I can handle. These are examples of telling stories. So here's an example. I just found this today. This is one of my students. You can see she published it like two days ago. Uh, Melissa Thibodeau, who's a rock star and, and just killing it on LinkedIn. And I've worked with her and wrote her profile, but she does a case study, winning an exclusive contract with a $2 billion organization. And she's talking about what it's like, what happened and what it's like now. So she's telling a story, but also demonstrating expertise. So notice the first sentence or the little subhead, it says these three concepts will lead to consistent winning. So she's gonna teach you three concepts of how she won a contract with a $2 billion company. It's not just a great story. There's a lesson kind of contained inside of it. And then she's a good storyteller. She says, it started with a cold call. Reading between the spoken lines, I could hear the faintest whisper of need. That's all I needed. Walking back to the car. She's telling you a story, right? She's a character. Walking back to the car, my heart started racing. Butterflies did the cautiously optimistic happy dance of my stomach. And then she has a nice plot twist here. It's a very good thing. I didn't know what I didn't know, right? Curiosity, like what's going to happen next? That's the secret sauce with creating content online that really captivates people is capture their curiosity. If 
if you're on my email list, and hopefully some of you are, <laughs> do you notice how I do emails? There's tons and tons of curiosity. There's They're very conversational, but there's also lots of curiosity. I try to make the first one to two sentences of an email something that you need to know what happened next. And I'll even use email subject lines like, can't believe this happened. You won't believe this. Uh, made my jaw drop. Because that when you hear phrases like that, you go, well, what happened? What do you, what made your jaw drop? I have to know. So bringing in curiosity into your content is very, very powerful. And Melissa did a nice job of it here. So again, we're talking about these three simple secrets and I wanna keep moving and I wanna talk about secret number two. So as we dive in, let's really talk about how to get people engaged with you online when you take your business online and then also how to get people to empathize with you and how you empathize with others. So let's do this. It's really understanding how to use the internet and social media in particular to engage people. It's like a virtual one-on-one -on -one coffee meeting. I can't explain it any more simply than that. It's just, you need to talk to people online and talk to them on social media like you would talk to them in real life face-to-face. -face. Where the real disconnect comes in for a lot of people is, their online messaging or emails or instant messages are very formal and jargony and filled with sales copy. They're not like how you would ever talk in a coffee shop. You would never talk that way. And that's really the secret to getting people to engage is talk to them like human beings, right? <laughs> like here's a quick win example. I'll explain this from. So with LinkedIn, which is where I hang out because it's B2B for leads, right? There's 700 million people on LinkedIn. I always talk about this in my LinkedIn trainings. All the money on LinkedIn is in the mailbox. All the money on LinkedIn is in one-on-one -on -one messaging where you really treat it like a coffee meeting, where you warm people up, you break the ice, like my send it in Jerome story, and then you engage. And with LinkedIn messaging, what's really exciting is now they've understood how important it is to humanize and be conversational with LinkedIn messages. So you can see where I've underlined, you can do little um, audio memos directly to a prospect on your LinkedIn mobile app. You can do little selfie videos and send them direct to someone you're talking to on LinkedIn one-on-one. -on -one. You can do animated GIFs, you can share your location, you can share your calendar, like you can really hyper-personalize this. So here's an example of a client of mine, Bob Cantor, who dropped in an audio message, like just to, I was teaching him how to do this. He drops in a, a little audio message. You can see how it stands out. Now they can hear your voice. So when I'm one-on-one -on -one messaging with Bob, imagine how it elevates the trust and the intimacy level to actually hear his voice in his own words, okay? Think about this. Here's a you know prospect I ended up closing on LinkedIn uh, into a five-figure contract. His name was John. And what we did was I started with text and everything else. And then we started talking about the project and I took it to another level where I started sending him personal videos. So you can see, I just took my phone out on my front porch and shot a video, you know, in the heat of the moment saying, hey, I'm so excited to hear about your decision with the project, et cetera, et cetera. Because again, it raises the trust level and raises the intimacy level when someone can see you, look into your eyes, hear you, feel your emotions, your expressions. And all of this is readily available and easy to use on platforms like LinkedIn, and I'm sure with Instagram and Facebook, you can send similar types of kind of selfie videos or messages. So it's really very simple to get people to engage with you online. How do you talk to people in real life? Just do that with your one-on-one -on -one messaging, right? Don't talk corporate, don't bring be jargony, just talk to people, be very conversational. Here's a great example. Anyone from Wisconsin on the webinar, let me know, because I want to start tearing into you. Now, let me give a little context for this. This is a one-on-one -on -one messaging exchange. I'm from Minnesota. If you grow up in Minnesota and are a fan of the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers, which you should be if you live here, uh, you are taught at an early age to hate Wisconsin. Wisconsin is the enemy. It's a bad place. There are bad people in Wisconsin. You should never go there. It's really a horrible, uh, horrible use of land um, and humans. <laughs> so... So of course, it's like Minnesota and Wisconsin where I live here, we're like the Hatfields and the McCoys. We're rivals, right? The Vikings and the Packers. And you're laughing hopefully because you can, you get this. Like if you live in Alabama, is it Auburn or is it the University of Alabama? Is it Roll Tide or War Eagle, right? Like SEC football, 
you're going to roll with this rivalry stuff all day. So when I am doing one-on-one messaging and I find out this guy's from Wisconsin, I immediately start bantering and joking about the rivalry. And he's jumping in laughing about it. And we're having a good time. We're breaking the ice. This And this is what I would do in real life. I would talk trash about Wisconsin and the Gophers. And then, of course, pivot into, well, hey, here's ways I can help you with you know projects I have or things like that. Now, the, the core lesson of this, you don't have to act like I do. But your biggest advantage in today's marketplace, the number one advantage that you have, no matter what you do or what industry you're in, is you. It's your unique personality. It's your unique style of communicating. It's your unique story. You've got to bring the real life you into your online interactions, into your online engagement, into your online messaging. You just need to be yourself. You've got to put yourself, you've got to overlay the real life you into your online messaging, your online presence. If you do that, here's what's going to happen. Being yourself online being your authentic, normal self, even if you're an introvert, whatever it is, you will attract people who want to work with you and you will repel people who would be a terrible fit. So for example, I'm very gregarious, outgoing, like to joke around, talk trash, have fun. That attracts people who enjoy that sense of banter and give and take. And I do all these 80s jokes and I'm very self-deprecating, popcorn buckets on my head. That attracts a certain type of clientele. People that don't take themselves too seriously, that like to have fun with business, and it repels people that would be a terrible fit for me. Super stuffy, you know, suit and tie every single day. Everything is serious all the time. Like I, I would die working with people like that. Like so, I'm repelling them. And the beautiful thing is, when you are your authentic self, that helps you stand out in the marketplace. Because at the end of the day, no matter what it is you do, people are buying you. They're buying your personality. They're buying your communication style. They're buying a relationship with you. The product or service is important, yes, but they're not going to buy it if they don't know or like you or trust you. And the only way they're going to be able to do that is if you put yourself out there with your content. And again, you don't have to be some character. Just be yourself. Just put yourself out there. Because here's the real thing is people are craving authenticity. They're craving transparency. They're craving human connection. When you're doing business online, like all of us are right now, forced by circumstances, we're all done with people pretending their life is perfect. We're all done with, you know, hashtag blessed. Here's my latest vacation photos. Here's how perfect my kids are. I'm sure people right now are publishing photos of how they're the perfect stay-at-home mom while they're also a high powered female executive. And look at, here's little Johnny doing all his homeschooling while I'm on a conference call, hashtag blessed, hashtag killing it hashtag mom of the year, like, give me a break, right? Like my kids are, I don't even know, they're probably hanging from the rafters right now, you know? But it's like, just be authentic. People want that. Like we have enough posers on social media and and it's very refreshing and you build instant empathy and trust if you just are real. And, And I try to do this all the time. Like I really share a lot of authenticity and transparency and you don't have to turn your social media feed into an episode of Oprah or Dr. Phil. But I like to share a lot of real life stuff. So for example, one of my most popular posts I ever did on LinkedIn was, I talked about a a business lesson and a story. So the story was, hey, I endured a lot of trauma and abuse and dysfunction growing up. And that had a huge impact on me. I mean, and I have a photo of myself when I was seven. And by then I already had been having abuse and trauma happening for like three or four years. And so what was interesting to me was these concepts that came to me later in business through my business coach were, you know, income improvement really follows self-improvement. And no matter how much you want to just kind of shove it down, you can't outperform your self-image. Like if you don't deal with your internal stuff and deal with self-image and deal with shame or self-hatred or not being able to trust people because of all the stuff that happened to me as a kid, If I didn't deal with that personal stuff, I couldn't be successful professionally, or at least not the level I wanted to be. So I shared this on LinkedIn, like just letting my guard down. I mean, like, look, because I know so many other people have had bad stuff happen. Like, sorry, if you're human, you've experienced loss and pain and suffering and, and whatever it is. And so this was just my attempt to say, hey, there's a valuable business lesson in this, which is income improvement follows self improvement. Here's my journey. Here's what I'm learning. Here's how it's helped me. 
Hopefully it'll inspire you. And what this does is you build empathy. People trust you more. People are going to trust you a lot more if you're letting your guard down. And again, not doing sob stories, not sharing what was me, but more like, here's the journey I'm on. Here's the things I've struggled with. Here's how I'm moving forward. Like I think of Chris Ward. I just had her on my podcast yesterday and she shared her professional journey, which was had a really successful marketing agency for over a decade. Her husband got sick and ended up passing away from cancer and very real traumatic story. And she doesn't hide it. But the lessons that came out of that were she, during those two years that her husband was really sick, she had to keep her business running and had to figure out how to become really productive and manage her time and, and keep clients happy and all that stuff and still run a business. And out of that, you know, after she went through the grief process and everything, she created now a new kind of brand, a new kind of, you know, uh, approach that she's helping others with called win the hour, win the day like strategic time management, productivity lessons. And for Chris, it came out of a personal crisis, out of a personal situation where she had to learn how to do it. And when you think about it and how commoditized all these different services are, there's a million time experts, there's a million productivity experts, but how many have Chris Ward's unique journey and unique story? Like there's something there that I resonate with. Like I lost my dad to cancer when I was very young and I know what that feels like. And it's, inspiring to me that she's walked through that and now you know is back out there helping people and i love that her mission and her why came out of this situation like so that's another example of someone being very authentic and how it wins business okay so again we're talking about these three simple secrets to take your business online and to sell without being sleazy and i want to talk about secret number three which is really now how do you execute all this we've talked about how to get people engaged online, how to really demonstrate expertise and teach people. How do you actually execute this? How do you enhance this online without going nuts? And it really comes down to this. It really comes down to combining content that you create plus automation. That's the secret sauce here is you have to have some content. Again, you have to have some cookies and some cotton candy, but you have to combine that with automation so that people can self-select. Because you'll knock yourself out going crazy doing one-on-one phone calls all day with people who aren't qualified or people who don't know you yet or they don't like you yet or they don't trust you yet or they're not, they don't have money. What your content can do if you do it well is it can pre-qualify people. And when you have automated content, that just helps people self-select and keep raising their hand saying, I want another cookie. I want another cookie. Now I want a whole bag of cookies, right? What's next? What's next? So let me show you this. You create content. I don't care what you do for content. I Do what you're comfortable with. There's no right or wrong answer. If you want to write a book, write a book. That's my number one lead magnet is books. Uh, if you love images, do images. If you photo quotes, whatever it is. Uh, podcasts. If you love to talk, do a podcast. If you love teaching and training, do a webinar, videos. Like, the point is you've got to create some content. You've got to create some cookies and some cotton candy and some other elements that are going to help people. And once you do that, now you take that content and you put it into an automated system. And this automation is where you have tagging and you can deliver content on a certain timeline. And you have these kind of, I call it if then, like if they click this, then send this. If they open this email, then send this email. If they ignore this email, wait three days and send this email. This is where you get really strategic with automation because it's kind of like an amusement park where they walk in and they choose which rides they want to go on or like the choose your own adventure books we had growing up, right? You could choose what you wanted to do next. Let people self-select, let them qualify. Leverage all this technology we have so that people can kind of tell you, here's what I want next. I'm going to click this link because I want more podcasts, or I'm going to click this link because I'd rather watch videos, or I'm not going to click any of this because I'm not interested. Because you don't have to sell everyone. You don't have to have everyone like you or be interested in you, but you want to get those people who are interested in you through a system where they keep um, consuming your content so that by the time they get to your front door, they're already qualified. So let me show you a little bit more of how this looks. Let me take a drink of water here or Mio Energy. Okay, 
Automation. It's all about, and on the left-hand side of this slide here, it's Entreport is what I use for automation tools. And I'm not intentionally not sharing tools on this right now. I can get into it in the Q&A, but the tools don't matter. I don't care what you use. It's just the strategy is what matters. So like on the left, you can see if then, like do they have this tag? If yes, end. If no, send this email, then wait six days, then check and see this, then send this. Like let them self-select and keep moving them along. Create some content and then automate it and automate the decision process so that, and this is not hard to do. It really isn't. It, it might seem crazy, but it's not, okay? And the key is people will move through a funnel then. You're not wasting time talking to each individual person who comes across your radar. Like one of the things I've learned is if you don't know anything about me, it's very hard to sell you. If I just cold called you out of the blue and said, hey, I, I know you don't know me, but I'm John Nemo. Can I sell you LinkedIn services? You'd be like, dude, go away. Or you'd be like, well, who are you? What's your background? Do you have any authority in this? Do you have any results? What's your approach? What's your system? Like you're going to spend all that time on a one-on-one -on -one call telling someone everything and then they may or may not buy. Why not use content to do all that for you? So here's an example. Here's what my funnel looks like for LinkedIn Riches, one of the different funnels I use. So they opt in in the top left corner to get a free copy of my book. Now, once they opt in to read the book, that's a huge piece of content, a cookie that they're consuming. While they're doing that, I'm gonna automatically send them some emails. And it's gonna be you know, my hero's journey, inspiring belief in them, giving them more tips and more cookies. And then I'm gonna have a call to action, inviting them to a webinar. And then I'll have a yes or no decision tree. Did they sign up for the webinar? Yes or no. If they did, yes. Did they attend? Yes or no. If they didn't, do this. If they did, do this, right? So you're walking them through a funnel. And I created this just using Google Drawings. It's super easy to do. So there's lots of different ways you can map out a journey with content and automation, right? And kind of put the cookies together. So this is really the secret sauce. This is how you scale yourself online, especially if you're a business coach, a consultant, a small business owner, if you're the face of a brand, you can't do 100 phone calls a day and have that perfect energy, that perfect delivery to tell everyone your story and to demonstrate expertise and to, you know, all these things, just bottle, bottle it all up as content, automate it, and then let people self-select and move through it. Because when people go through your content, and when they take it through automation and self-select, they're consuming your content on their own time. You're not spending any additional time or energy warming people up, teaching them, training them, getting them to know and like you, telling them your story. They're doing all that on their own time. So when they come to your virtual front door, when they are at a point where now it's worth your time to get on the phone, they're pre-sold. They already know your whole backstory. They've already seen some quick wins from your tips. They've already gotten to know, like, and trust you because of the stories that you've shared. They're excited. You've, you've inspired them. Now they're coming to your virtual front door going, how much does it cost to work with you? Like, how does this look? How does it work? I just have a couple quick questions. That's the secret sauce of selling online is let the content qualify people before you ever talk to them. Because you don't, you want to use that one-on-one -on -one time with someone who already knows your whole spiel and knows your story instead of having to start over from scratch with every single prospect, it's very hard to do. So another quick thing I wanna talk about is how to scale yourself, right? Doing one to many instead of one on one. And here's one thing I love to do. I get a lot of emails and questions and I even have seen questions on the webinar like, what do you mean by this? Or what's your advice for this? Turn those one on one emails that you get into content that you can share with everyone. So instead of just answering people one to one, and it's like a little private conversation, turn it into content. So what you can say is, hey, that's a great question. I'm glad you emailed that to me. I'm actually gonna, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna answer that on my podcast. And I'm gonna give you an answer specific to your situation, but I know so many other people have the same question, they'll really benefit. And that way, you create that answer, you create that piece of content. It could be a blog post, it could be a podcast, a video. Now, the next 100 times you get asked that question, you have a pre-done script that says, hey, Thanks, Sally, for writing that question. I actually recorded a podcast specifically to answer it. Here's a link. Knock yourself out. I'm not going to sit here and retype the whole answer every single time. Turn your biggest kind of FAQs into content. That, that's the secret stuff here is 
bottle up the questions you get all the time or the biggest you know things that people want turn them into content you can share over and over and over again so i have these same questions i get on linkedin all the time should i have a premium linkedin profile how do i appeal to multiple audiences on linkedin since you're talking about niching should i have two linkedin profiles should i this should i that and i have an answer for all that and i say here's a blog post for that here's a podcast for that here's a video for that and they are like great i'll go consume it i really like that what else do you have oh well, i have a webinar great what else do you have i have an online course great what else do you have i have one-on-one -on -one coaching great what else do you have i have done for you like they move through because they really like the content so does anybody want some bonus stuff i know we're running out of time but i want to give some more value here uh who wants some sales secrets type yes in the comments if you're still with me and you want some sales secrets i'm going to pause and have a drink um okay Type yes if you want some sales secrets. Ooh, and here's a good question Jeff asked that I will answer. How are you driving traffic to the top of your funnel? How do you do that when you're just starting out? I do it all for free, Jeff, with one-on-one -on -one LinkedIn messages. That's my whole LinkedIn Riches course. I don't spend a dime on paid traffic, and it's awesome. All right, people want sales secrets. I love it. Peggy, Jane, Erica, uh, Marvis, Liliana, David, Dennis, of course. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. Rodrigo's in. Okay. Good, good, good. Glory, my people. All right. So here's my number one script for selling online. It's got four specific parts. This could be a LinkedIn message, an email, a Facebook message, however you want to do this. And again, a caveat to this is you've already warmed up the prospect. You've already broken the ice. You've already practiced some professional courtship. They have gotten to know, like, and trust you. You've talked football. You joked about Wisconsin versus Minnesota. Now you're pivoting into a sales conversation. And here's the four parts of it. You ask them a question. You offer something of value. You ask permission, which is a big step a lot of people miss. And then you remove pressure. So let me break this down for you, and then I'll show you the actual script here in a second. So part one is you ask a question. So the beginning of your LinkedIn message or email or whatever is, hey, Joe, hey, John, hey, Sally, curious, are you interested in blank? And blank is a topic around a product or service you want to sell to them. So what I'll say to someone when I want to sell them LinkedIn riches, you know, which is how to win business with LinkedIn, I'll say, hey, Sally, curious, are you interested in getting more clients with LinkedIn? Or it could be, are you interested in finding leads using LinkedIn? Or whatever your business is, are you interested in getting your website ranked higher on Google? Are you interested in improving your leadership skills? Whatever it is that you want to eventually sell them, you ask. Because again, you don't want to waste time on people who aren't interested. If I ask someone, are you interested in getting leads with LinkedIn? And they say, no, I'm retiring. Well, then that's great. I'm not going to waste time on you. You're not a prospect, right? So you ask a question. Let them qualify themselves. Part two is you offer something of value. Okay, you don't say, well, let's have a call right now, right away. Like you have to earn the right to ask. So you say, are you interested in getting leads with LinkedIn? If so, I have a great free training, free webinar, free blog post, free podcast, free video, free um, analysis, you know, if you have to like do something, right? Free audit, whatever it is. You say, I have a great free resource. You offer something of value that's gonna demonstrate your expertise. Part three is you ask permission. If you'd like to see it, if you'd like the free audit, if you'd like to see the training, give them a simple call to action. Just reply yes or shoot me back like a thumbs up emoji right? Ask permission. There's a huge mistake um, so many people make is they automatically just include a link. Here's a link to my calendar. Here's a link to my webinar. Here's I didn't ask for that. I don't want that. Like you're spamming me. People think that's spammy now. So ask permission. Let them raise their hand and feel like they're in control because you don't want to waste your time with people that aren't interested either and tick them off. And then part four is you remove the pressure. You finish the message. Again, remember, the secret to engagement online is conversational. So you just say, and if it's not your cup of tea, no worries. If it's not for you, no big deal. Uh, no worries, no pressure at all. Like you just end it very like, you know, if it's not for you, no big deal. And let me show you what it actually looks like as a full script. So you say, hey, insert the name. Hey, Sally, hope this note finds you well or whatever you want to say. 
curious, are you interested in blank? And that's typically a topic or a benefit they might want. Are you interested in getting new clients with LinkedIn? And you say, if so, I have a great free fill in the blank. If you'd like to see it, you're asking permission, just reply with the word yes, you know, or thumbs up emoji and I can send it over. And at the bottom you can see, and if you're not interested, remove the pressure, no worries at all. It's very conversational, it's very friendly. There's no links included. There's no big ask of let's have 15 minutes, let's book a 15 minute call to explore mutual synergies or let's have coffee or let's, you know, I'd love to pick your brain. Like, no, just, are you interested in this? If you are, I think I have something that might help you. It's completely free. If, if you want it, let me know. If not, no worries, no big deal. And this is how I do this to answer Jeff's question. How do you get traffic into your funnel? How do you fill up webinars? I do this on LinkedIn all day. And I have a VA that helps me and I use scripts and, and different tools. And basically I'll send people one-on-one -on -one messages and I'll say, hey, hope life is treating you well. And this is something where I've asked before about a webinar. So I'm circling back to ask again, a new training. Um, just curious, do you use or ever want to use LinkedIn to find new clients and customers? If so, I have a great and free on-demand webinar. I'm making it very clear like what I'm trying to offer. I'm not trying to trick you and make you think I'm there live. You know, I have a great and free on-demand webinar that walks you through my favorite tips. Just reply yes or shoot back a thumbs up and I can shoot you a link to the training. And if that's not of interest for you right now, no worries. Just thought I'd check in and hope you're doing well. And you can see at the bottom, Andre just shoots back a thumbs up because he's on a mobile device. He's busy, he's quick. Now I'm gonna put him on the webinar, right? Get him enrolled, send him the link, whatever it is. This is how you do it. This is how you sell online without being sleazy and spammy and pushy. So there you go. We have covered three simple secrets to take your business online, to sell without being sleazy. Uh, and I wanna open it up for questions. So let me get things back open. Um, and thank you. Thank you for the, watching the presentation. Let's fire away uh, in the questions. So let me do this. I'm gonna stop the presentation. Put myself back on camera. Hey, <laughs> uh, we have a little bit of time and I'm willing to stay and hang out. Um, so if you have questions, just go ahead and share them in the chat. Um, all right, let me see. So I got a lot of people. If you have questions, if you want personal advice on your situation, on your business, this is your time. Like take my brain and pick it apart. Okay. Hey, Liliana, good to see you. Um, Shay says, would you use an automated thing like duck soup? So I think you're getting into LinkedIn questions. So the answer to this with LinkedIn and, and automating messages, LinkedIn has been very clear, Shay, and said, don't do it. It's a violation of our user agreement. If you automate on LinkedIn and we catch you, we, we can restrict your account. So it's a risk versus reward thing. Some people still use automation tools and run the risk of hope LinkedIn doesn't catch me. You don't have to use automation tools. You can just use people. Like I have a virtual assistant. She can do a hundred messages an hour for me. She can go onto my LinkedIn, into my inbox and send a hundred kind of scripts where hi, insert first name, paste in the script. Hi, insert first name, paste in the script. That's all the automation is doing anyway. So it's just up to you. Uh, D Scott says, Fab, thanks for the generosity. Of course, of course. Uh, Luis says, does this approach change for different types of businesses? Oh, okay. And then Paul has a question. How do I get people on LinkedIn to engage by liking or sharing my fancy dancy LinkedIn posts? So here's what I would say, like, don't waste time on that. Don't waste time on that, Paul. Uh, let me show you. I'm going to turn on my screen share. Boo! Look at that. Okay. So everybody hopefully can see my screen. So we'll go a little deeper on LinkedIn. So Paul's saying, how do I get people to engage on LinkedIn? Uh, it, 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 here's what I would say. First of all, if you can see my screen, okay, just type yes. I want to make sure, uh, the screen share is working. Paul, let me make sure. Okay. Just type yes. Okay. Jane says yes. Okay. So we're rolling. So, uh, you want the short, the short and true answer. None of this matters. None of the content on LinkedIn matters. It, it's zero. Like all the money on LinkedIn is here in the messaging. It's not about trying to get people to engage. It's about messaging them, right? It's all about messaging, right? So here's Marvis and I, like we're totally, we're, we're doing one-on-one -on -one marketing, right? So Marvis sends me a message. Hey, thanks for the free copy of your book. This is my VA actually wrote back. Hey, thanks so much. 
mean the world to me if you leave me a review. So we're engaging. Hey, printing your book, going page by page. That's awesome, right? Awesome. Thanks for inviting. And then now I invited Marvis to today's training and I use the script, just reply yes or thumbs up. Marvis replies that. Like very fast, very simple, just engagement. Because again, here's the thing I always tell people, you know, everyone gets caught up on these vanity metrics like, oh, you know what? I, I posted this piece of content. I got 11 likes. I got, you know, 555 views. And what I always tell people is like, you can't deposit any of this in your bank account. <laughs> Unless something's changed, you can't put likes or shares or comments in your bank account. So I really don't care. And for LinkedIn, at least, and I'm not trying to pretend I'm an expert on every network, for LinkedIn, at least, all the money's in the mailbox. All the money is going in and just doing one-on-one -on -one personalized messaging, right? So you basically go in and you talk to each of these individuals one-on-one. -on -one. And that's how you get them engaged. You ask them questions. Hey, are you looking for, you know, tips on X, Y, Z? Uh, you know, and then people will tell you. And so really, it's not about feeling like on LinkedIn, at least, oh, I've got to publish all this content. I've got to get a bunch of likes. Because again, at the end of the day, I'm using social media specifically to sell stuff. Like that's all I care about, right? I mean, yes, I care about human beings and all that, but I mean, I'm not in it to have the most likes. I'm not in it to have the most shares, profile views, video views. I get very little of those, but I make a lot of sales because I just spend my time in here talking to people and that's where the money is. So hopefully that answers that question for you, Paul. All right, so let me go down here. Oh, lots of questions coming in. All right, and I'm gonna actually show them on the screen. We got work to do. Uh, yes, Curry, we'll get you back. What are your thoughts on moving ahead to continue? Let me see if this is a question for all, Curry, or if it's more for your coaching. We got work to do. Yeah, this is probably more a one on one call with us, right? Because Curry is one of my one on one students. Okay, so we'll get to that. Uh, no, don't have two LinkedIn profiles, Patrick. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> Don't do that. They'll get really mad. Um, and I have a blog post I can give you, Patrick, on how to appeal to multiple audiences because you have unrelated products. I'll show you how to do that. Gary says, I do okay getting positive responses. I consider a warm lead. What's a good first follow-up to cement the connection? Yeah, so what I would do, Gary, if on LinkedIn you're getting people to accept, do an icebreaker first. Like, hey, I see you live in New York. How's the weather? I see you went to the University of blank. Do you still follow the football team? I see you volunteer for Big Brothers, Big Sisters. That's really cool. I did that too. Like find an icebreaker, see if they engage, and then go from there. And even if they don't, then you can start up with that kind of that message I shared, that template. By the way, curious, Larry, are you interested in blank? You know, the reason I ask is blah, 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 blah. Yep. So good stuff. Uh, I, oh, Liliana, I got your first webinar in social selling. Any, any particular suggestion to be super good? Can you give me some ideas about the best tools for webinar? So I have a whole course, Liliana, called Webinars That Work. So, and there's a bunch of free tips on there. Like if you want to start with, you may have access to this already. I'm not sure. Because I think if it's, the, if it's the Lily, I'm thinking of, we've already done some stuff together. But here at the bottom, I've got tons of free webinar trainings, topics, all that good stuff. So I will put that in the chat. Free webinar tips. Boom. Okay. And then let me see. Let's see some other questions here. I will start my first webinar. Okay, good, good. Let me know how that goes. How do you manage your level one connections outside LinkedIn? Okay. So Lamar, that's a good question. So one of the things you can do with LinkedIn is you can take people, I always tell you know people, the number one thing is I wanna get you off of LinkedIn and onto email, onto the phone. So like what you can do is, we'll use an example of Marvis, right? I don't know if you're still on, the, on here, Marvis, but looking good, Florida, hope you're nice and warm. Ooh, look at Marvis, look at the profile, what I do. Nice. I... I help motivate executives. Here's the benefits they get. Achieve their dreams or raise more balance. 
All right. I also help people going through. Okay. So there's a little bit I would tweak here. But anyway, what we can do is under more, you can also, or it's actually under contact info. You can, and I won't put Marvis's contact info on the internet for everyone to see. Uh, I'll do it to me. So <laughs> people won't freak out. Um, what you can do is you click on contact info and then you can get someone's email or phone number or whatever. And then you can actually send them a, what I call a warm email or a warm phone call. So what I'll do Lamar is like, once you and I have started bantering on LinkedIn and once we have some messaging going, what I'll do is I might just take it over to email or I might just call you and go, Hey Lamar, it's John Nemo. I know we were talking on LinkedIn last week about blank. I just thought I'd call you. I saw your number on your profile. I, you know, it's always easier than trying to type messages back and forth, or I'll even put my phone number into messages with prospects sometimes and say, Hey, you know what? Instead of us trying to type out a bunch of messages in our phones, just call me. Like, so move them off of LinkedIn. And again, it's not spamming. You have to have context for the, for the conversation. If you're going to send me a personal email or whatever, have context. If you just try to reach out and hammer people with, I'm going to scrape everyone's email and just put them into my automated email se sequence, you'll get no sales and you'll just annoy people and get a bunch of complaints. You have to move them off of LinkedIn, but have context for the phone call or context for the conversation. Hey, I saw you liked my post on blank. I thought I would actually email you some more stuff about it. So just look for context. Yeah, great question. All in the messaging. Whoops. Hey, thank you, Rodrigo. We need some positivity. I love it. All right. So let me go through. Ooh, Kevin's got a long one. All right. Let me have a drink here, Kevin. Okay. So let me, Kevin is saying, I'm selling a course that career development directors can use for their students. I'm connecting with people who are struggling to find break the ice methods. I don't know who their favorite football team is, and I don't think they would appreciate the banter. Here's what I'm going to call out, Kevin. Um, and and again, okay, before I call you out, well, I'll do two things. I'll call you out, and then I'll bail you out. <laughs> Everyone likes to talk about their favorite subject, which is themselves. So if, if you start bantering with me about what I love and what I'm interested in, Kevin, I'm more than happy to tell you, all my thoughts on the state of hockey in Minnesota. I'm more than happy to tell you about my favorite topic on earth, which is myself and my career and my goals. Um, and humans are human. Like even if they're super high powered, busy executives, they're still human. They still like to joke and laugh and have a little bit of banter and a little bit of ice breaking. So, you know, that said, there are some industries, especially with LinkedIn, where it's like, hey, time is money, cut to the chase everything's commoditized. What do you want? Right? So it depends on what you're doing and you have to know your audience. So as a career development director with the product you're trying to sell, I mean, are they very like everything's a commodity time is money. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Like attorneys are, or are they more like, well, I love learning. I'm, you know, I'm into, I'm in development. So I want to know how to help my employees, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I think they're more that way. So I think you do, and you're trying to sell an online course. So I think what you do is you use LinkedIn and you find icebreakers. So what I mean is you can search for people just on regular LinkedIn and you can get all these different filters, right? So even on just regular LinkedIn, you can find like what industries they work in, companies they've worked at. You can find um, schools they've attended, right? So you can find out... Um, all kinds of different things. And then you break the ice around that. So for example, I could create, and Sales Navigator is even better because it gives you even more filters. So I can go in and say, you know what? I want to find um, podcast hosts who, you know, uh, people that call themselves a podcast host, right? And then I want to find people that podcast hosts who live in Australia, and now I can personalize my icebreaker with, hey, how's life down under? Boom. So super easy, right? But it's all scalable because LinkedIn tells you this is a group of specific people, podcast hosts who live in Australia. So I could say, hey, insert name of podcast host. How's the podcast and how's life down under? 
you know, I've always wanted to visit Australia. Like just riff, like just talk about that. You can also look at all these other filters and say, you know, um, you can do years of experience and say, wow, it looks like you've been at company name for over a decade. What's keeping you there? Like, just look for ideas, look for questions, look for things that you can kind of jump on. Hey, I see you worked at this company in the past. How was that? I had a friend that worked there. Like, you know, just like you do in real life at a coffee shop meeting, you basically look for commonalities and then just ask questions about them. I see like the biggest one I like is a school. Cause it's so easy to be able, at least in the United States to talk about, Oh, I see you went to this university, this college. How did you find it? Do you still follow the sports teams? Uh, I see you graduate with a degree and whatever, like it's all there for you. You just have to be creative and just ask questions. And what I do is I use these LinkedIn filters to create common icebreakers for a group of people. They all live in the same place. They all have the same job. And then I can very quickly scale that ice breaking more effectively. So good question. And I didn't mean to pick on you, Kevin, but man, that's good stuff. I love it. Okay. Um, so let me go down here. Kevin had a good one. Rodrigo, thank you. Oh, Shay wants the blog post about different prospects. Yes, let me pull that up for you. How to appeal to multiple audiences. Here it is. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to send this to you, Shay. To appeal to different audiences on LinkedIn. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's in there. And then Jane says, "Yeah, oh, yep, yeah, yep." Okay, Jane and Shay wanted the same thing, so I just sent you that article. Yes, you are the same, Lily. Oh, it's good to hear from you. Okay, Bruce Kirk is throwing it. The captain wants. Do you want me to look at your profile, Bruce? What's going on here? Let's take a look. There he is. Sales coaching. All right, virtual. That's smart virtual coach to private companies with two. To, yeah, see, I like how niche this is, Bruce. You're saying like I'm a virtual coach, which obviously given current time is critical um, to private companies with two to 20 salespeople who want to fix. This is a good headline, actually. This is really good because you're identifying a, a specific pain point. Your team is struggling with prospecting and selling. You're a private company. Yeah, man, that looks really good. Okay, good stuff. Yeah, I mean, I like it. I like it. I like it, Captain. And Bruce is part of our LinkedIn Riches group too. So let me go down. Scott says, how do you track your pipeline of activities similar to what you outlined? How do you know who to call? What's the cadence? Yeah, good question, Scott. So what I do, I use a couple of different tools. So I use a third-party tool with LinkedIn that organizes everyone. So what I do with my LinkedIn group is I'll organize people into little groups and I'll use sales navigator tags. So I'll go in and I'll actually, you know, tag people. So you can see here, you know, I can tag them as a consultant or a podcast host. And then my, um, let me see if I can open this. My VA and I, she's a spreadsheet ninja. Let me see. Um, leads. No, it was, um, or shared with me, but we basically create spreadsheets of the groups and then how often we message them. Let's see if it's this one. No, it's not that one, but I, I basically do. Maybe it's this one. Sales and Sorry, I'm just trying to pull this up on the fly. Here's an example. So we'll we'll take a group and we'll say, Okay, so here's all my LinkedIn connections. I've tagged 2,400 business coaches that I'm already connected to. When I sent a message about a free book, and then what we do is I, I outline several messages that we're gonna send. One is gonna offer them a free book, one's gonna offer them a free template, one's gonna offer a webinar. And then when we message this group, then we put the date in. So hey, we last messaged everyone with this tag on February 4th. So when I want to invite them to the live webinar, I, I typically, to answer a question about cadence, with LinkedIn messages at least, I probably do one a month. One, maybe two LinkedIn messages per month is plenty. If you start hammering people, certainly not every day, 
never more than I'd say once a week at most, but I found a good cadence for LinkedIn is about once a month. And so how I track it is we tag everybody on sales navigator and you can see the number. I have 20,000 connections. So it's a little crazy, but then we remember, okay, we last messaged this group in November and then we message them again in December. So like we can kind of have a good cadence there of how far apart it is. And then the other thing I use is um, Entreport, where I basically will have all these different kind of cadences and decision trees. And this is a CRM with automation tools. And you can go in and you can basically do little campaigns. So let me see if I can find a good one here. So I'll go in. Let's say this is, I wonder if this would be a good one. Just to show you an example. Yeah, this is a good one. So you can show kind of the decision tree. They get added to the campaign. I check to see if they already have already a member. If they're already a member of this program, yes, stop. If they're not, send the first sales email. And I'll say, this this one was, I think, a 72-hour sale. So wait one day. And then I check the condition, remember? Because I integrate everything. So if they buy it, when they buy the program, it tells Entreport, add this tag, they're a customer. So then Entreport knows, oh, they're a customer, yes, don't email them again. They're not a customer yet, send them email too, wait a day. Check and see if they're a customer, send email three. And so you can see it's kind of this huge decision tree, but it's all done. The content's done and it's kind of based on their behavior. So the cadence, I would say, my emails, I try to do like one email a week, sometimes more. Um, just if I have something to say, LinkedIn messages once a week. And again, there's kind of a journey you wanna take people on. And it really just depends. I mean, I've never had anyone complain that I'm sending them too much value. I've never had anyone say, stop sending me so many good free tips. Stop sending me so many quick wins. You know, <laughs> I mean, I've had people say, I don't read every email because I'm busy, but I, when I do, I always find value. And that to me is a win. So, all right, good question, Scott. Will, I went and changed a few things in my profile. Yeah, you'd have to send me a link to your profile. I don't know your profile, Will. So put your link in there. Um, Ryan, I post a lot and use my likes. Yeah. Yeah. So you, this is another good example. Ryan's talking about on LinkedIn or on other social networks, use your likes as context for a conversation. Hey, I saw you liked my post on blank. Let's connect. Right. I saw you liked my video about blank. Let's connect. Brilliant. Brilliant. Ryan. Dennis says, how long did you continue helping debt collectors for transitioning? I think I did this for like two years. Um, and, and basically what happened, Dennis, was he's saying, how long did you continue helping the debt collectors for doing the LinkedIn full-time? What I found was um, I had a full-time marketing agency, a bunch of clients. I didn't really enjoy it as much. And one of the things they kept asking me, hey, can you do for us what you did on LinkedIn? Can you help us find clients? Can you help us find clients? And people kept asking me that. So I was like, okay, I'm going to just create a book and a course on how to use LinkedIn to do what I did. And so once that really took off, then I kind of wound down the marketing agency and I really don't focus on seeking out kind of the debt collectors anymore. Um, but good question. Yeah, there are a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of experts out there claiming authority. What premium account do you recommend for coaching and training? I recommend Sales Navigator uh, simply because Gene Sales Navigator will give you the most information uh, and the most filters on people, which is critical. Yep. Kathleen, same question. Good, good, good. All right, good stuff. Ryan has threw your profile up. Oh, I like this. It's kind of an interesting avatar. Shaking hands and building brands. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Director of biz dev. Okay. So this is interesting. So this is an interesting approach. And what I, I tend to go away from this because um, it's entertaining. But if I'm on LinkedIn, and I'm just using you as an example, Ryan, take it or leave it. Take what you like, leave the rest. What I find is um, people give you about two seconds to look at your profile and go, well, what could he do to help me? You know, yes, this is funny and cool photo, but is there really anything in it for me? Like, what would this guy really do? Shaking hands and building brands, what does that mean? I don't know what the hashtag means. You know, so I would look at it. This is my advice. And again, there's a million experts. Take what you like, leave the rest. I'm a big believer in ultra, ultra 
simple. Here's exactly what I do and who I help from the top down. So like, I'll just like, literally like, this is what I do. I do this for this group so that they can decide within two seconds if it's for them or not. Um, and I call this kind of the, the aspirational versus practical. Like you're obviously super creative and super good at what you do. Um, but I do think uh, I, if I was giving you free advice, which I am, <laughs> I would make it like, you know, we help this type of brand, you know, get whatever it is. Um, and it's kind of resume, right? So, um, but you know what? I mean, if it works for you, roll with it, man. And I, I don't know if that's you, what you're looking for advice or not, but that that's definitely what I would say. Um, good stuff. And uh, let me go through. Peggy, please post the blog about the different types of prospects. I think you're talking about the, or you're talking about the different audiences. Okay. I can't find the filter button. I can show you that, Marvis. International nurse. Oh, man. Yeah, there's lots of good questions on here. I want to go up and make sure Ryan says thanks. Okay, good. And I hope you didn't take that the wrong way, Ryan. I'm not trying to be a turkey. I've just given quick thoughts. Okay, well, okay. Let me just look through some questions before I go. Sales Navigator. If you collaborate as a professor... Yeah. I mean, so Jane, like for your situation, I would, I mean, I would say where you've seen me, you know, and list all the schools. Yeah. Like where you've seen me put all those in there, because again, if it adds credibility, end of the day, what you want to be in your LinkedIn profile is what's going to get your audience excited to want to work with you. Is it niched and all about them um, or not? No handshaking now. <laughs> You're welcome, Jody. My firm has pre-approved content. Yeah, of course. If you've got content, Gustin, use it. Like, it's not going to hurt you. It will never hurt you to put content on LinkedIn. Absolutely not. And to Ryan's point, if you're capturing people with content, now that gives you context for conversation. Because if they like your content, you can reach out and say, hey, I'm so glad you like my post. What did you find most helpful? Meantime, let's connect. I'd love to learn more about your business. Um, yes. You know what, though, Curry? This is interesting. So implementing strategies, is my income more predictable? Yes, but it has nothing to do. I mean, let me explain this. Let me show you what changed everything for my income. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm getting a prop. I had pretty predictable income for multiple years. Let me see if I can find the document. Okay. So I'll actually, yeah, okay. So, all right, let me pull one thing up. Sorry, I'm looking around my laptop. I was holding myself back with mindset. Like what I will tell everyone on this call is there is no secret magic bullet. Like marketing is marketing, right? The strategies and the scripts and the approaches I'm teaching you work incredibly well. But if you are self-sabotaging and you're not moving yourself forward, none of these tools will matter. And so this book, uh, I tried for years and years to work on my mindset and I never found anything that clicked. I tried Tony Robbins and Napoleon Hill and like this book, for whatever reason, Psycho-Cybernetics, I'm going to do a gratuitous flyby, book flyby. <laughs> Maxwell Maltz is the guy's name. I'll put it in the comments. Um, I want to just tell you about it. When I read this book right here, my monthly revenue tripled in one month. Okay. It tripled in one month. And what happened was I finally figured out my mindset issues and I figured out a way to deal with them. Uh, and again, income improvement follows self-improvement. And you cannot outperform your self image. And I had kind of a revenue roller coaster for a lot of years with my business. And I was okay, like paying the bills. And I mean, I've been employed by myself since 2012. So I'm not like, you know, <laughs> I'm making it, but I didn't have steady, consistent growth. And I didn't hit the goals I really wanted until I fixed my mindset. And for me, this is the book that did it. It could be different for you. It could be Tony Robbins. It could be Jim Rohn. It could be, there's a million different mindset people. 
and I'm going to go off on a riff now, but the reason I like psycho cybernetics, if you don't know the story behind the guy that wrote this book, his name was Maxwell Maltz. He was a plastic surgeon to the stars, like in the thirties, 1930s and forties and fifties. And he, he was fascinated because he would fix people's physical deformities and, you know, improve their nose and their ears and, you know, whatever. And people would still come back to him and look in the mirror and say, I'm ugly. I'm ugly. I'm hideous. I can't go out in public. I look terrible. And he'd be like, what are you talking about? I fixed your whole face. You look perfect. They're like, no, I'm hideous. Can't you see? And that really pioneered self-image. And he's like, well, wait a minute. Why do you see yourself differently than what the facts are? And so he put this all into a book and it really came down to understanding all these different concepts about we become what we think about all day long. Like literally you have one of the core lessons for me, and I could talk for hours on this book, but here's what really helped me triple my revenue was I realized that all of us, myself included, have like what I call autopilot, which is whatever you grew up with, whatever kind of programming got in, you know, for me, there's a lot of trauma and abuse and bad stuff. So I grew up, my autopilot is negative. It's like shame and self-hatred and you can't do it and you're a failure, you're going to blow it. So if I just wake up and just kind of jump into the day and start going, that's the underlying kind of autopilot. Like you're going to blow it, self-sabotage. Don't go too, don't do too well. <laughs> um, once I turn that switch off and he gives you these like visualization, like you literally, the way that we think is in imagery. If you think right now about eating lunch, what do you see? You see pizza, you see cookies, you see the food you're going to eat. You see the restaurant. Well, you can't go to a restaurant right now, but like you see what you're going to eat. You think in images. And so what he teaches you in psycho is think about the images that you want to see happen. So see your bank account changing, see yourself being successful, see yourself sitting first class on that airplane when you fly, start daydreaming about it, visualizing it, living it out in your mind like it's true. And the reason this stuff works is the way that our brain is, it, uh, it can't tell the difference between reality and what you think about. That's why virtual reality rides scare the heck out of you. You sit in a chair, you put on a little visual headset and it pretends to take you on a roller coaster and it feels like it's true, right? So just like our thoughts, we will act not according to what things are really like, but what we think they're like. For example, right now, people could be sitting here watching this webinar saying, I look out and all I see are obstacles. Coronavirus, the economy is going to go in the tank. My business is dead. Like there's nothing I can do. Oh, man. Or you could look at this current environment, the same set of facts, coronavirus, a shaky economy. You can see opportunity. You can see opportunity and go, oh, my gosh, here's a chance to reinvent myself. Here's a chance to pivot my business. Here's a chance to try a new idea. Here's a chance to bring different level of service to people. Here's a way that I could, you know what, try this instead, like opportunities or obstacles. It's the same set of overlying facts, which are coronavirus, everyone's stuck at home, economy shaky. You either visualize and see obstacles or opportunities. And for me, the big change was I had to turn off the autopilot. So I'll literally visualize myself going into like a I always see it like an airplane cockpit, like my mind. And I see myself turning off dials, turning off autopilot. And then I visualize for 10 or 15 minutes times that I've been really successful. And I go all the way back to childhood when I was just a little kid in Little League and hit a home run and how good that felt. And I relive that memory of being scared, hitting the ball and being successful. And I'll relive times where I won an award or I came through in the clutch. And that, that literally floods your body with endorphins and excitement and energy. And then I go into a sales call. Well, guess how good I do on the call because I'm all pumped up and I feel invincible because I was visualizing and reminding myself, here's who you really are. You're not the guy on autopilot who's hanging his head and hoping for a miracle. You're the guy that went out and made it happen, you know, or you're the gal that made out when it happened. So like for you, Curry or anyone else, like you've got to intentionally kind of cultivate what you want to focus on and turn off the autopilot. If it's not psycho cybernetics, find a different book, but the number one way to grow your revenue is to work on your mindset, period. End of story. It's not a tool. It's not a script. It's not a strategy because all of those will fall flat if you're sabotaging yourself. And that's what I learned. Like I, I invested and got a bunch of scripts and I mean, I had success, but my revenue literally in 30 days tripled 
when I got my mindset fixed. Because all of a sudden, here's an example. Like what I used to do when I would get an inquiry via email about, hey, can you help me with LinkedIn training or whatever? I would pass, I'd wait. I wouldn't write back right away. I would passively write back an answer and kind of hope they bought and I wouldn't like go for the kill. What I started doing with Psycho-Cybernetics was I visualized seeing my bank account grow. I visualized seeing the numbers I wanted to hit each month. I visualized myself celebrating that by building a pool in our backyard because we made enough money. And all of a sudden when those emails started coming in, without thinking, I picked up the phone and called the people because their phone number was in their email subject line. In the heat of the moment, as soon as an email came in, hey, I just read your book, interesting, uh, had some LinkedIn questions. I just called them right away. Hey, it's John Nemo. And they were like totally shocked and excited that, hey, you, you instantly called me and you're full of energy and passion and enthusiasm and you can help me. And then I would start closing them. And just, I was an animal. I was just closing everything. And it was because I was, this part of me was giving the rest of my body instructions. It was basically saying, hey, you need to go hit these goals. And here's how you're going to do it. Like, that's the difference between that waking up, seeing opportunity and waking up, seeing obstacles. And the big fallacy that I had to get through with mindset was it's just some quick fix and you flip a switch and you never have to struggle with it. Like I struggle with it every day. Like I have to wake up and I have to consciously program myself. Like, otherwise I just go to autopilot. I have to overcome 35, 40 years of bad programming today. Right. So like it doesn't just instantly flip a switch, but that's really the secret sauce. So hopefully that makes sense. Sorry, that was a long answer, Curry, but I got all fired up. You got me going on mindset. Watch out. Um, all right. We we're going way over. Um, go pack. Go get out of here. Vincent, Vicente, Vince. I, we, I remember talking to you on LinkedIn. Uh, all right. Andrew says you need to do a webinar just on the mindset. Yes, you're shouting. This has been the most helpful of the entire session, just so you know. Yeah, it is. Thank you. And I, I've long, I've put a lot of mindset stuff, Andrea, into my other trainings, LinkedIn Riches and webinars that work and some of the other ones. Um, but yeah, I mean, a, a, just a training or a course of mindset would be super helpful because I think that is the number one thing that everyone has. Um, going Gary says that too. Yeah, I will thank you. Yeah, so Psycho Cyber Next will help you a ton. Um, it really is. It's it's something that once you understand the other big thing about mindset, um, is your brain is unemotional, it does not care what your goals are, it's just gonna do what you tell it. So it's not like you it's not like you give your brain a goal and say I want to make a million dollars. Your brain doesn't go, "Well, that's kind of greedy." Really? You know, your brain doesn't care. It's like, "All right, I'm going to start putting together a plan to make a million bucks." Like it will do whatever you tell it. Just like if you tell your brain, "I don't I I want you to make me feel bad." Like I want you to take me around and and find out find ways to struggle today. Like Maxwell Maltz says it this way in the book. He says, you go around every single day with an internal feeling and you look for external pegs to hang it on, just like you're hanging up a coat. You go around with an internal feeling and you look for external events to hang it on. So when you go, if your internal feeling is people are always dissing me, people are always being negative to me, and you go into the store, guess what? You're going to look for an interaction or almost create an interaction where someone disses you. Or if your internal feeling is, I can't wait to get out and just bring people some happiness today, share my passion, share my joy. You're going to go into the same store and the same clerk and share something and get and look for and find and pull out the good reaction. Just like if, uh, I mean, you go in and if someone says no to a sales offer, you either see it as an obstacle and the verdict on you, or you see it as an opportunity to try something new next time. Here's the last thing I'll say on mindset, since people are loving this, is the other key thing that helped me triple my revenue was how to understand failure. Uh, the fact that it's only failure if you stop. Like Maltz talks about in the book, he talks about the concept of like guided missiles. That's what cybernetics is. It's like machine learning. So like with guided missiles or torpedoes that submarines shoot, he used torpedoes because it was like the 40s and 50s. And that was a big thing. But they don't go on a straight line to hit the course. They have to zigzag back and forth constantly. Look at that course correct, right? They they don't hit the target directly. So you have to look at your attempt to sell and to grow your business the same way. 
you're not going to go in a straight line and immediately hit your target. You're going to zigzag back and forth. The key is you keep course correcting. Someone says no to your sales pitch. You, you hang up the phone and you don't, you don't act defeated. You don't say, well, that's the end of the world. And that's the verdict on me. And I stink. You say, okay, is there anything I can learn from that? Were there any specific objections that they brought up that I could counter better next time? Or even sometimes I'll ask the prospect, like, why didn't, why did you say no? Like, was there something I could have done differently? I'm not trying to hard sell you. Like I do this after my webinars, I'll do a follow-up email and says, can I get some honest feedback on the webinar and the offer? And people will tell me, they'll be like, yeah, uh, I didn't like feeling pressured to buy or I needed to talk to my spouse and you really didn't make that available or, you know, and it's like, you learn from that. You zigzag back on course, you course correct. So next time I'm going to say, here's the time limit or here's, you know, get your spouse in the room or whatever. And dealing with failure that way makes it a lot different because you're expecting to fail. You're expecting to make mistakes and just course correct. Like, the other thing too was if you wait until you think everything's perfect and the conditions are perfect, you'll never act. You'll never have it together. Like people always ask me, well, did you have it all planned out when you quit your day job and have one client enough money for 30 days? I'm like, no, I had no clue what to do. Like, I, I mean, I had an idea to use LinkedIn to get business and I had an idea for what the business looked like, but I didn't, I didn't have a big specific plan. And almost all my biggest failures are when I did all this work ahead of time and had this whole system and then it flopped as opposed to going out, testing things, getting feedback, course correcting, adding something new in for the next time, giving people what they wanted, saying, well, what what would be better? Well, I'd rather have this. Okay, I'm going to add that. And just instead of trying to be perfect the first time out, just adjusting. And I think that's been a core thing with mindset for me is like, I, I no longer view it as failure. I just view it as like, oh, okay, that's a pivot point. Like I'm trying this today. I don't have anything to sell. But it's like, I'm going to, you know, I'll probably follow up with people after the webinar and go, is there anything I can help you with? Right. And like, learn from it. What did you find most valuable? I'm reading the comments now. The mindset stuff was what people enjoyed the most. Oh, okay. Maybe I should have led with that. Right. Like the mindset during this coronavirus. Like, so you can always learn. And it's only a failure if you give up. And the other thing, too, that Maltz is good about saying is do, if you fail, don't just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Try something new. If your sales script is failing and every, you know, then try a different script, ask and learn. Like that's the other big thing. People are afraid to ask for feedback because they don't want to get embarrassed or feel shame. I don't have any shame. I'll ask you and go, well, you didn't buy on my webinar. Why? Like, just tell me, like, I found you really annoying or I found you were too ham handed or you know, you, I felt pressured. And you, what you do is you just filter out the personal stuff and look at strategically like, okay, well, they didn't like my delivery. They thought the jokes were off color. Okay. Maybe I should dial that back. Or, you know, I'm not saying I do that and I'm just trying to give examples. And then other people, you can look strategically and go, okay, maybe the timer thing is a negative. Okay. Maybe I'll change this. And you learn a ton, you adjust, and then you just give people what they want. And that's how you succeed. The other thing too is that I got out of this book that really has helped me is where is your validation coming from? It better not be from strangers you meet online. Like I'm not going to read these comments and go, oh, someone didn't like it. I better just like hang my head and go into the fetal position. Like who cares? Like, you know, your validation has to come from, for me, it's from God um, and from my guy, Jesus and from my family. It's not from whether or not people buy my stuff. And that's something you have to work on and go, I'm not going to let other people dictate, you know, whether or not I get to be happy today. Like, don't give people that power. My business coach had a great line the other day. He said, it's hard to be victorious when you're being a victim, right? I mean, it's hard to have victory right now if you're going to play the victim. Well, woe is me. I had this type of business. Coronavirus tanked it. What are we going to do? Like, I know a lot of people that have restaurants, event businesses, this is an opportunity. You can sit here and go into the fetal position and by all means, give yourself time to kind of feel bad, but then pivot and be like, okay, there's opportunities here. I have a restaurant. Guess what? I'm going to take in our wait staff. You all are now DoorDash drivers, <laughs> you know, like uh, Facebook. We're going to get on Facebook and have a contest. We're going to cater a seven course dinner for one of our fans. And we're going to throw on a $500 gift card. Everyone who enters blah, 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 because we need to stay top of mind. Uh, let's run a gift card sale for the restaurant. Buy one, get 
get a gift card free so that when this clears, people come back in to use the gift cards, right? Because we want to engender loyalty to the brand. Um, is there something we can do to get some positive PR in the community and, you know, make meals for first responders and that'll keep our name top of mind? Um, is there something we can do with, you know, leveraging our kitchen to da 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 like, like just be creative and pivot. Like that's the, the secret sauce is find opportunities, not obstacles. So all that said, all that said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Kind words. Thank you, Jane. That's really nice. Um, yeah. Think and grow rich mindset. Yes, yes, yes. Love it. Um, oh, Jane says, is your business now, John, based hundred percent on direct work? So, no, so my business model is, um, that's a good question because I think a lot of people, how do you monetize your knowledge? So I sell books, obviously, um, but those are more just, my model is, and the model I give my clients, especially if you're a coach, consultant, trainer, speaker, who has to sell what's in here, like I do, have what I call, it's like a triangle, triangle shape. So across the bottom is kind of your free stuff, free tips, you know, the cookies that we talked about. The mid level can be kind of information products like a, you know, a template, an ebook, a video training series that they pay for, but it's not a whole lot. Your mid level can be an online course, one to two grand. Above that can be done with you, five to 10 grand coaching. Above that can be one on one, whatever that is. And then at the very top is like done for you. So what I'll do, like, for example, with LinkedIn, what I'll say to people who want help with LinkedIn and getting businesses, okay, at the very bottom, if you just want to do it yourself, I have all these free tips. Here's a free book. Here's free trainings. Here's free blogs. Here's free templates. Knock yourself out. Go do it, right? A, a cut above that is an online course. And that is prepackaged um, videos and manual or templates, fill in the blank. It's all my best stuff. It's updated. You get the latest and greatest tips, right? It's above and beyond what the free stuff does. Okay, great. That's for a certain price. You do it yourself. It's like handing you the recipe. You go to the grocery store, buy the ingredients, cook it up and taste test it and look back at my recipe book and add more of this. And then above that is I'll do it with you. You still go to the grocery store, buy everything and start cooking, but I'll come over and taste the soup with you, help you cook it and make it better by coaching you. And then above that is done for you where I go to the grocery store, I buy all the ingredients, I come to your house, I clean I set up dinner. I invite all your guests. I wait on them hand and foot. I make dessert. I do stand up comedy, whatever. <laughs> like it's all done for you. And then at the end of the night, you just pay your bill and you got what you wanted. So you can really organize your business that way from you know lowest to highest. And people will pay the most for direct access to you. Like that's the one thing is how do you scale yourself? Well, you make your one on one time the most expensive and most valuable thing in your business. And then below that is, you know, group coaching and below that is online course and below that is free stuff. And that's how you scale yourself. And then you really are able to have a successful business because again, you have people at different income levels and different points doing business with you. And as they have success, they can move up because once they've had success with one of your products, one of your programs, Again, that cookie analogy, what's next? What's next? What's next? So anyway, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Oh, that was a lot. I didn't expect to go for two hours. I could keep going. I will um, email out a replay for everybody still hanging out. If you want to talk to me directly, if you have questions of how I can help you with coaching, with one of my courses, email me. So john at linkedinriches.com. I just put it in the chat. I'll put it up here as well in the messages, john at linkedinriches.com. And I'll try to do some follow-up emails post-webinar. But if you have direct questions, if you want me to coach you, if you want me to give you advice on other topics, on, I have four different online courses. I do have one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have group coaching. I have done-for-you services. Email me and we can talk more because obviously I need to know your situation. <laughs> Uh, and figure out how I can help you. Um, but I'd love to keep the conversation going. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for being on. Um, yeah, email me, John, J-O-H-N at LinkedInRiches.com. I would love to know what you thought of this experiment, this coaching, and if you want more of it, what you found really helpful, what you didn't, you know, what you want help with. Um, and I will do some follow-ups. I'll send out a replay. 
uh, I just think it's really important too to connect and just talk to each other, even though it's me yelling, but I can read your comments. I just think uh, it's a great reminder that we are human. We want connection. We want, you know, genuine, authentic engagement. So here's the other thing I'll say. You're going to be fine. I don't care what business you're in. I don't care how hard you've been hit by coronavirus business-wise I'm talking about, not health-wise. You're going to be fine. And the reason is we live in the best era in human history to run any type of business you want from anywhere in the world. We do. Now, you need mindset. You need mindset to overcome fear and overcome anxiety and not give up. But you literally, every single person watching this, you have some gift, some creativity, some idea, some passion that can be monetized, period. Everybody was given a gift by God to do something special with your life. Uh, what that looks like, how that becomes a business, how that gets monetized, that's the fun. That's the fun of figuring it out. So take your time right now to think about it. And are you doing what you love? I have a book called Fired Up that'll help you um, get that as well. Tap into that passion, but don't be the number one thing. I'll, I'll end with a quote from Napoleon Hill because I love, I do love his stuff too. He said, fear is a self-generating Morris, M-O-R-A-S-S. -S. And I'm like, what's a Morris? It's a bog. It's a swamp. It's muck. Fear is a self-generating Morris. Don't sit around and be scared. Take action. Taking action cures fear. Taking action, moving forward, whatever it is, no matter how big the action is, start innovating, start pivoting, start asking for people for advice. Hey, you know, my business is getting hit hard. What would you do if you were me? Do you have any ideas? Ask. People want to help. It's a great thing about humans. So thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Uh, I appreciate you guys so much, so much, so much. Andrea says, give me more. All right, well, email me then. Email me. I'll be happy to do it. Um, Thank you, guys. Appreciate each and every one of you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Uh, and we will, you know what? Maybe I'll turn, my wife said to see if I should turn this into a series. She said, do you want to, you should do like a live one every week. So let me know if you want me to do that. I can maybe start riffing on more topics. So thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Be well. Email me, john at linkedinriches.com with questions. Uh, if you want more help, specific advice, anything like that. And I'll hit, I'll end the live signal for now. I'll get a, a replay out to everybody. Take care.